Rebecca. I'm just doing a very quick tutorial on how to use a jelly plate for those of you who are beginners, have never used one before. Um, your gel plate will come with plastic covering on it and mine is, um, the plastic has kind of gotten discolored so you can just use copy paper to protect it. So always keep your initial case and um, the, that it comes in and keep the plastic until it gets discolored and then you can use copy paper. But I always keep the bottom um, protected by paper or plastic. So this is gel plate, jelly plates are very pliable and you can see they like jelly and they get um, ruined pretty easily. So if you put it down on a surface with some, some kind of texture, it'll imprint on it. Also, never use a sharp instrument on it because it'll cut it and damage it. And also, um, uh, make sure that you clean it and wash it afterwards, although I'm not um, really like obsessive about how I clean mine because sometimes the history of the, the paint comes through in the print. So I'm just going to start off with, I'm just using regular uh, Blick Studio acrylic paint and I'm going to squeeze out um, just a little bit. You don't have to use much um, paint. I won't go into all the different paints that you can use for now. I'm just doing a very basic introduction. We're going to take our brayer, use a rubber brayer, not a foam brayer, and you're going to spread it out on the pa gel pad. Now, depending on what you want, you can do it really, really, really um, perfect, or you can have some sort of unevenness to it. I always keep some paper handy to off-roll my excess ink because sometimes it makes some interesting patterns. And now I'm just going to take some paper, in this case I'm just going to use regular copy paper, and I'm going to put it over it, and I'm going to rub it like this, and then peel it off. And most of the blue came onto the paper. You can see that it wasn't perfectly even. So I actually like it like this. It makes for an interesting texture. But you can use this on its own. You often need plain paper like this. Or you can work in layers on top of it. So I'm going to take another color. This aqua color. And I'm going to roll this on. Now I'm going to work pretty quickly because today is hot and the paint dries very quickly if I don't if I work too slowly. So now I'm going to take a Q-tip. Remember, I said I don't want you to ever um, use a sharp instrument. So I'm going to just draw it randomly into this and create sort of um, almost like a stencil and then I'm, I can put this paper on again and layer this so I'm going to wrap this on And you'll see what happens. So the blue showed through wherever I had removed it with a Q-tip. So that's kind of interesting how you can create these beautiful layers. 
Now there's a little bit left here, so I could make what is called a ghost print. So I'm going to take some deli paper or tissue paper because that usually absorbs pretty well. And I'm just going to make a little ghost print and just instead of wasting the paint. And then I have this really cool paper. So now what I'm going to do is show you a couple of different ways to um, to mask, uh, create masks where you are then working in layers. So I'm going to grab another color for now. Um, let's say I'll use white. And I'm notice I'm not cleaning my plate in between just because I'm doing a quick demo. But I'll talk to you a little bit about cleaning it when you between colors if you're wanting that. So now you could use string randomly put on. So you're really creating like what is called a mask. You're masking off certain areas. That's just with string. So the first one we did was an earbud. Now also I'm using some plant material as a, a, as a way of blocking out certain shapes. And I'll just do this leaf for now, just so you can see um, how the leaves work. I can do this on another um, piece, but I'm just going to keep on going over this. So let's, now, when we work with this, we have to rub it on really well and make sure that you get into all the little crooks and crevices so that you get that nice imprint. And... Now, when you take it off, this is what you got. So, this is from the string. This is from the plant material. And now you've got a really cool paper that's three layers. Now, I'm going to take this off. This off. The paint is pretty dry, so it may not work on here. But um, I'll try a little bit on top of this one. This is a ghost print. Oh, there we go. So you can see the string. This one didn't come out quite so well. So now um, to clean the plate, you can use a wipe. These are just baby wipes. Or you can also use a spray bottle of water. Spray the water on and then clean it with a rag. Um, there's a number of different ways to clean it. And when you're finished, if you want it really clean, you can just run it under soap and water. Hand sanitizer actually works pretty well to clean it as well. And I want you to be sure that you can actually, you can print on anything. You can print on text paper. You can print on whatever paper is going to absorb. So just for fun, I'm going to do a little, um, a little print on the text paper. So you can see how it is and I'm gonna mix some colors up here so we have we have sort of a, a mixture of colors and I'm not gonna even blend them completely because I want that kind of effect so again I can put down you know anything anything I can do I can draw into it again with the q-tip if I want to And I'm just going to 
work on this text paper for you to see how cool it is when you print on it because then the text shows through this is an old encyclopedia So that's what happens and this writing shows through and I think it's really beautiful. So that's it for my demo. Um, just experiment. That's the whole thing with a jelly plate. Experiment. Make sure to keep it clean. Wash it, you know, as much as possible. And um, when you finish, dry it. Put the plastic back or the copy paper back. Put it back in the plastic case and voila. You've got it for next time. So enjoy.